Uh, thanks for the invitation, Jared. Thanks for the introduction, Jessica. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. I love New York, and I love R, and I thought it couldn't get any better. Then I learned there's a lot of pizza in this event, so I am super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Ricardo Bion. I'm a data science manager at Airbnb, and today I'll be telling you a little bit about uh, how we use R to make the most of our data. For those who are not familiar, Airbnb is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace in which users can list and rent short-term accommodation in a variety of property types. More recently, we started expanding to different verticals. We are now offering also a series of experiences, places, and there's a lot of exciting things coming up uh, in the next few years. This all started in 2008 with one air bed. The original name of Airbnb was Air Bed and Breakfast. Only air beds were allowed in one city. And today, we have over 3 million homes in over 71,000 cities. So this growth has been huge. And just an example to illustrate the speed of this growth, uh, let's take a look at this ggplot visualization that I made. So this is Airbnb in 2011. And I stopped in 2015 because after that, it was basically the entire map was covered in white uh, and in lines. And I think a big reason for this fast growth is that Airbnb is a data-informed company. Uh, we, in 2008, uh, we had a data science amongst our very first five hires. And today, we collect over one billion daily events, and we have a team of over 100 data scientists. And this is not including data engineering, data infrastructure, machine learning engineers, financial planning and analysis. So it's a really data-informed company. Uh, this data science team is incredibly diverse in terms of gender, in terms of background. Some of them used to be professional poker players. Others are economists, uh, mathematicians. And also, they're very diverse in the uh, uh, tools that they use. So every once a year, we have this survey with 100% participation. And this is the distribution of language used at Airbnb. Uh, most people use R. A lot of them use Python as well. But one thing that is interesting is that most people are highly confident uh, with the R language. And we think that part of that was because of those three pillars. So we invested a lot in R packages, R education, and we have this culture of reproducible research. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna be covering each one of those uh, in more detail. So let me get started with uh, R packages. Before, when I joined Airbnb, uh, a little bit over three years ago, uh, most people were already using R. Each person had a set of functions in their computer. So every time you would do an analysis, you would ask around, you would get an email with the function. Yeah, I've done this before. That function was not very well documented. Maybe you'll find a bug in the function. Maybe you would rewrite it from scratch. And the cycle would repeat. Some of the problems of that is as the team, the team grew, we started noticing a lot of duplication of work. Some people would have the same function and they would write it from scratch. Some lack of transparency. Maybe there were bugs in the function. Maybe there was some not, not clarity about the assumptions that were being made. And it also became pretty difficult to share uh, new, new knowledge. The solution for that was in 2014. We introduced our first R package. Uh, most, uh, all of you probably know that R, uh, an R package is the basic unit of reproducible R code. And it can include a variety of things, functions, documentation, data, tests, add-ins, vignettes, uh, etc. The name of this package was clever, cleverly named RBNB. And it has over 100 functions right now, more than 20 contributors. And it's used not only by the data science team, but also by our engineering, analytics, and user experience team. And today, we have more than 500 reproducible reports done using this R in our knowledge repository, which I'll tell you a little bit about later. So the way this package is, uh, is structured, it's stored in our uh, GitHub enterprise. And this allows multiple people to collaborate simultaneously. Every single contribution has to be peer reviewed by our Airbnb developer teams. And new versions can be deployed quickly to all users as needed. We have a mail group, and whenever there's a new version, we mail everyone. And on, on GitHub, we have Linter, we have TestDat, and we have T uh, Travis CI implemented. And this is a screenshot where people can submit new issues, can make requests for new functions and functionality. Um, and when new hires come in, we put some of those as a boot camp task when they're learning a little bit about R. Uh, the package is, compo is uh, comprised of four main components. The first one is a consistent API 
to access remote data. The second one is branded visualizations. The third one is R Markdown and document templates. And the first one, which is what most people think about when they think about an R package, which is a series of custom functions that allows you to, to do your work a little bit more quickly. I think this is the most uh, used component of the R package, which is a consistent API to access remote data. We have this consistent place and action, origin destination function, and with this we can move data between anywhere in our data infrastructure. So if I want to get data from somewhere in uh, HCFS, I do HCFS uh, get, I put the path, and it loads that into a data frame in R. If I want to put data into S3, I do S3 put, and I pipe a data set, and I put a destination there. So this allows us to very quickly manipulate data between different uh, places in our infrastructure. One thing that is interesting is that this interface does not change, even though the implementation of the, the databases can change dramatically. We had a massive cluster migration, and with one simple package update, all the changes in the back end uh, were implemented, and no one had to worry about uh, all the different um, de details of that. And here's a little bit of an example uh, of the usage of that. The second one is a branded visualizations in CSS uh, templates. So we have, uh, CSS templates for Shiny, uh, a bunch of interactive and static uh, visualizations. This is just an example of ggplot. This might seem simple, but it really adds this consistency of the data science brand at Airbnb. So whenever there is a report, there is this consistent feel and look, and it can be included directly in our presentations. It matches with our themes. Um, it, it really like steps up our, our, our brand internally. The second one is R Markdown, notebook and slide templates. Uh, instead of using a keynote uh, slide and then we have a rebrand, maybe changes our font, maybe changes our color scheme, we have everything now done. Uh, a lot of our reports are done with uh, a, a, uh, R Markdown and a slide template with reproducible code. We also have weekly reports that are automated, also using our brand. <laughs> Uh, and the final one that most people are familiar with is this idea of like custom functions, uh, imputing missing values, year over year trends, a lot of like custom machine learning uh, things that we built, they're all inside this package as well. Uh, the challenge that, that we started noticing is what, what, what were the incentives for people to contribute to this package instead of just using the functions that other people wrote? Uh, so we started investing a lot in classes on how to contribute. So Every new hire goes through a class about package development. They learn about RBMB. It also was included as part of our performance review, as part of enrichment. So whenever you contributed code, you would, you would get uh, some credit for that. It also will help build, us, we, we build a sense of community. So we created this RBMB developer group uh, and people met regularly. So it became a part of a group once you became a contributor. And the thing that really made the difference was uh, stickers. So once we build stickers, if you took the RBMB developer class, you get the red sticker. Once you contributed uh, code to RBMB, then you got the developer sticker. And uh, some people noticed that fixing typos ca counted as contributing to the Airbnb developer, so it now has to be a function, and then you get this Airbnb developer sticker. <laughs> so jumping now to education. So, uh, no matter what, how good our tools are, they're not enough if people don't know how to use them and if people don't know how to use R. So education is something that I'm incredibly passionate about and I think it's what really made a difference uh, for people at Airbnb to start feeling very comfortable using R. Um, I, I have an entire presentation on this topic, but I'll try to go a little bit quickly uh, here. So every new hire at Airbnb starts learning R about part of the onboarding uh, process. People come with different backgrounds. Some of them used to have uh, R proficient in Stata or MATLAB, or maybe they, they, they're not as proficient in a, in a programming language. So we have a data boot camp. It's a week-long full-time boot camp where they learn about different things, and part of it is, a, is, a, is R. They also get a new hire buddy who supervises them on their very first projects, give them some custom uh, tips, and we also have a project membership as part of this boot camp. Then after they go through this, we, allow, we, we extend on that. Anyone that's interested, we uh, sponsor a data camp membership so they can continue taking classes there. Uh, on, we, we have a lot of online resources where people can learn about like, previous, previous work. We have study groups about more advanced topics. We don't stop that. We also have also advanced resources. We sponsor people to go to the master developer course whenever Hadley is in town and teaches that. Uh, we sponsor people to go to conferences like this one to collaborate on projects. 
We also invest a lot on peer support. So we have weeks, weekly R office hours, we have a uh, R Slack group, and we also think that code review is a great way for you to learn more about R. So whenever you submit some code, people review it and you learn, uh, you, you are always learning. Uh, finally, talks. We have a learning lunch that happens weekly. We have journal clubs, we have offsites. Um, and finally, we think that the best way to learn is by doing it yourself. So it's through contribution, contributing to Airbnb, getting your code reviewed and reviewing code, and uh, teaching opportunities as well. And ultimately, we think that another thing that helps with this education is building the sense of community. So we have different visitors coming to the office. Uh, Ramnath came to our office uh, a few years ago. We sponsor conferences like the R uh, Open Science Conference, uh, external talks and contributions like this one, blog posts, uh, and much more. And uh, finally, this idea of reproducibility that really like, got demonstrated why R is so powerful and things that you cannot do with, with non-programming language. So remember this that we saw a little while ago? This, uh, as the team grew, we had this problem of duplication of work, lack of transparency, and difficult sharing knowledge. This extended not only to code, but also to reproducible research and analysis. Someone had always said, has anyone looked at uh, host churn, host retention? And you would find that in a keynote somewhere, or in a Google Doc, or in like a, a, a GitHub uh, post. And we realized that for the, for, for the team to scale, we also had to scale knowledge. And recently open source something that we've been using internally that's called the knowledge repository. And this tries to get this discipline of computer code sharing uh, to data analysis. So there's four components of this. The first one is study of reproducibility, and that's where R markdown comes in. So every analysis uh, is written in either R Markdown or in a Jupyter Notebook using Python, and it's entirely reproducible. Then this also has some metadata and the ability to search. So each, each post has uh, some tags about the topics, date it's created, the authors, uh, and it's uh, served in a web UI where people can search by any of those things. They can search by, by author, uh, by the topic, the second one is the, the, the issue of quality. Uh, research for it, to, for it to be useful, it has to be uh, uh, peer reviewed. We need to have at least two people review your research before it's shared in the knowledge repository. And this again, we use GitHub for that. So the, the, the research is, is uh, submitted to GitHub, both the R markdown and the render markdown with the code, graphs, and analysis. Uh, and as part of quality, we, re we realize that also we have other things in our uh, web UI, such as number of views, likes, and comments. So if anyone, after it's published, has some thoughts about the analysis, they can write comments and people reply. And we also have this idea of social proof. If, if we have 42, 100 views in some of the knowledge posts, then it's probably something of very high quality. Uh, and the final one is, again, this idea of a consumability, this idea of a branded template. So this is two, these are two screenshots of our knowledge repository. And as you see, there's this feel and look of Airbnb. It's easy to look for. The branded ggplot visualizations all appear here. And this made a big difference for it to be adopted internally. We could have just used GitHub, but then it would be unlikely for a product manager or for a designer to come here and browse to know about what we know about different parts of our product. And you might ask what kinds of knowledge are available in the knowledge repository. Um, there is basically anything. The most common one is data analysis, but we also now started having user experience research. Uh, we allow people to upload keynotes, PDF, meta-analysis, overviews, also to document tribal knowledge. There's some specific things. Maybe you know where that data lives in this particular table. It's okay to put in the knowledge repository, tutorial, and recently we started with this concept of gitless uh, contributions for, code that, for, for, an, for uh, analysis that don't have code. So you can just click on a button and you can uh, upload a knowledge repository there. So I told you a little bit about uh, R at Airbnb uh, and how we use R packages, uh, R education and reproducibility to make sure that everyone is empowered to use R uh, in their daily life. Uh, but I think this post can be somewhat, none of those ideas are new. Uh, a lot of this idea of like code review seems almost like common sense for someone who comes from a very strong computer science uh, background. And this idea of uh, peer review is, is very common for those coming from academia. So I think the insight here is that R can be a powerful tool for you to incorporate the best practices from both academia and software development uh, into your data science uh, routine. 
And if there's two things you can learn from this talk as well, uh, is that Airbnb is doing some really cool things. We have a lot of open source projects, uh, Superset for data visualization, Airflow uh, for scheduling jobs, uh, some external R, R packages as well. And finally, that, that we are hiring. So if any of you are interested, you can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>